Hi, my name is Angie Chung, and in this video, we're going to discuss earthquake early warning. Now, while this is a serious subject, and there's a lot being invested towards its potential to save lives, I'd like to break it down to make the subject a bit more accessible for everybody, with a little help from my friends. Let's say that this tree is an earthquake epicenter, where the earthquake starts, and these are our sensors. This is Bob, and these are his friends. Now, all of his friends got an alert for a recent earthquake, but he didn't, and he wants to know why not. To answer that, we'll have to start with how the system works. For starters, earthquake early warning is not prediction. What we're doing is detecting the earthquakes soon after they occur, and then sending out an alert to the public that they're about to feel shaking. When an earthquake starts, it begins at the epicenter, again, shown here with the tree. The waves then move out away from the epicenter like ripples in a pond. As the waves move out, they trigger our sensors, which we then use to send out an alert, letting people know to expect shaking. Now, during a large earthquake, there may be some people who do not receive an alert, like Bob. If a person is closer to the epicenter than our sensors, they will feel shaking before our sensors get a chance to detect it. This is one reason that we're continuing to expand our network to increase the number of sensors out there that can detect the shaking before you do. But there will always be some amount of time between when the earthquake starts and when that first alert goes out. Now the alert itself may come through cell phone apps, emergency alerting systems, or other technology that has yet to be fully developed. The amount of warning time that a person will receive depends on where they're located relative to the earthquake. The closer you are, the less warning time you'll get. Conversely, the further you are from the earthquake, the more warning time you'll receive. Because of this, there is no average warning time, it just depends on how far you are from the earthquake. Now, if your distance from the epicenter gives you just a couple of seconds of warning before you feel real shaking, you may wonder, what can you do with just a couple of seconds? Well, the most important thing that you can do when you receive the alert is to get safe. Drop cover and hold on. Again, my name is Angie Chang, I hope this helps. Let me know if you have any questions.